How many fights do you reckon you've had? Over 100. I've never lost outside, ever. Never? There's not a man out there can say what's been born, what's beat John Fury outside the ring. Well, because I'm bred to do it. Somebody insults me or my family. Next thing. Do you respect Wilder? Not as a man, no. I don't like him, don't admire him as a man. Jake Paul's a limited kid. Let me just state this fact. Tommy has got to knock him cold out. Look in that camera. This is real. What do you think of Anthony Joshua? He's lost the edge through the soft life. People slapping on your back, telling you how great you are, this, that and the other. I've got a problem giving them paydays, because they're not nice people. You know, they've got nothing good to say about Tyson, so why am I come rich? I'd rather piss on the belt. Is there any corruption in boxing? And if so, who do you think causes most of it? I'll answer some of it, but not all of it, because I'll get shot. Yes, there's corruption. But it's up to you whether you want to get involved in it. And Furies don't do corruption. Hi, I'm Rob Moore, and welcome to the Disruptive Entrepreneur Channel. So we are in Gold Star Promotions, about to speak to John Fury. John Fury is father of Tyson Fury, current heavyweight world champion, and Tommy Fury, about to fight Jake Paul. And he comes from a long history of bare knuckle fighters. So this might just be the most intimate and revealing discussion with John Fury. We discussed John and his life. John got very passionate about the Jake Paul, Tommy Fury fight, about AJ and his next fight, and if AJ and Tyson will fight and when, what he thinks about Deontay Wilder, and beef with Eddie Hearn. So all is revealed in this interview, but make sure you like the video and subscribe to the channel. Well, John, thanks for being on the show. Pleasure. The Fury family history goes back, I believe, and I think there's quite a lineage of fighters. Is that right? I think there was all fighters. There was only my father's generation and his brothers. It wasn't, you know, but going back past him, there was all fighters. It was a way of life they was living at that time. Mm. You know, because I think fighting, it's sort of, uh, it was a thing where they had to do it to get the living in them days. Right. It was a fight for survival. I think when my father and his brothers come along, it was like skipped a generation then, you know, we took up the mantle again another generation later. Mm. And was that a choice of yours or was that almost like destined you were going to be fighters? More like circumstance. Like, we growed up rough and tough. We lived anywhere, stayed anywhere, met all kinds of people from all kinds of walks of life. And you know what, you had to be a fighter just to get up of a morning. Right. Because if you didn't have three fights that week, the crowds of people we grew up around, it wasn't the norm. You know, it was sort of like forced on us. And we had to, it had to be in our DNA to survive, basically, you know. But uh, that was it. That's what cards were dealt, and we played them. Yeah. And we played it to the best of our ability. Never took a backward step ever with nothing or no one. And did you enjoy fighting from the off or learn to enjoy it because you had to? Fighting is never enjoyable. <laughs> because it's a pain game. The only thing you enjoyed is defending your name and your honour. And the fighting was terribly hard, but the winning and the pleasure gained from a win, no price could be put on that. That was the enjoyable part. And you could walk the earth as a man. You were 10 feet tall for a week after. You know, and that's what fighting does. You know, but fighting is... It's the biggest up in the world, but also the biggest downer. Mm. You know, you've got to learn to take both on the chin. Mm. You win some, you lose some. And you've got to be a, as much of a man in defeat as what you are in victory. Mm. And uh, um, we try to be that. Mm. And when you say we, who's we? Well, it was just me, my brothers, you know, uh, relatives from the past. You know, and we sort of like try to live up to them and take it a step further so the past I'd be proud of us. So you weren't just fighting for you then, you were fighting for the whole family name. Yeah, mm. still do. Mm. Still do, it's a thing that never goes away. And times are changing and whether, you know, after my sons are gone, because they're sort of like me, because I've had it instilled in them, but as the generations go on and it gets diluted, it'll probably never happen again. Mm. But I think me now and my generation, you know, we're at the top of it now and I don't see it being repeated again very soon. Mm. At, at the top of what? The way we are, the way we live our life. Stand up for ourselves, wanting to be the best at what we can be. You know, and uh, you know, the self-respect thing. It's all about my name. There's nothing else more important to me than my name 
because it doesn't even belong to me, it belongs to my father and my forefathers. And I wouldn't like them to be looking down upon me and saying, right, you're a disgrace to this name. And I think I've made them all proud by what I've achieved in my life and what my sons have achieved. Mm. I'm still achieving, you know, so yeah. It's all good at the moment, but things change by the day, don't they, as we know. Mm. But I'm ready for the downers. <laughs> I'm ready for them. Yeah. <laughs> the guards go up every morning. I'm going to say, what day can we have? What we're going to get today? And I'll know within the first half an hour it's going to be up or down. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I'm the proudest man alive. Mm. Sotty at this moment in time. And we've only got moments in time. That's all we all possess of any value. Mm. Memories are second to none. They can't ever be repeated or bettered, in my opinion. So yeah, I'm on an eye at the moment. Mm. Well, I hope it stays like that for a while longer. I'd love to talk about you as much as your sons, yeah. if you don't mind. Um, first though, how many fights do you reckon you've had? Over 100. All in professional and bare knuckle I've and just... Of, I've had a lot of fights outside yeah. of the ring. when I was, I've been fighting all my life since I've been a small boy. I had my first fight when I was five. Wow. I remember it because I got entangled in barbed wire because I was fighting an older boy. And it was, uh, we was got fighting and I got wrapped up in barbed wire and I got ripped to pieces as a kid with a barbed wire. And I remember I thought, my mum's going to kill me because I've ripped all my jumper and that, you know what I'm saying? Ripped my shirt. <laughs> I wasn't bothered more about more scared of your mum. I was more scared of my mum because I'd ripped my clothes on the barbed wire and I was wet through with blood because it was, that's what it was because the barbed wire had done more damage than me and him could do at that age. Mm. You know, but that's my earliest memory of fighting. And it went from there on, you know. Mm. And it just snowballs, don't it? Out of control. You know, people say something, especially when you go out for a drink. That's when it used to happen a lot. Because people, was different people in drink than what they are sober, aren't they? You know, and a drunken man speaks a sober mind. And he's worse to come out of him what he thought about you. And then we'd end up fighting. You know, and that was it. That was a regular occurrence. So probably more than 100, mm. actually. You know, when you end up with a pair of hands like them, you can see. Wow, well, look at your middle finger yeah. there. That's been broken, hasn't it? It's all, you know, it's war, isn't it? Yeah. It's war, but it's uh, a world of war I've been accustomed to for a long time. And it's part, it's a norm for me. Mm. Winning and losing is a part of life, you know, and at the end of the day, I take it all on the chin. But do I go out and do the best I can? I do, even today. I try to be the best I possibly can at everything I do, you mm. know, because I found in life coming second, you might as well not come anywhere at all. You might as well come 20 seconds a second. People only want to know winners. The losers take a back seat. And only, they only judge you on your last performance mm. in anything, not just fighting, the way you are, your last meeting, your last speech, your last conversation. They always remember that. Mm. And that's how I find life to be. And how many of those 100 plus fights do you reckon you won? I've never lost outside ever. Never? Never lost outside the ring ever, no. No. I can honestly say that there's not a man out there can say what's been born, what's beat John Fury outside the ring. Wow. No one ever and, beat me. And in the ring? I lost a couple in the ring, yeah, mm. because I was unfit and I was, tra there was trained athletes. Yeah. And a lot of people look at my record and say, yeah, you had 13 professional fights. But out of those eight wins, or nine wins, what I had, I was never supposed to win anyone. I wasn't supposed to win any of them because I was always in the away corner. Mm -hmm. I was what they call a paid journeyman, but I kept winning. And in them days, winning used to cost me money. Why is Be that? Because they only wanted to book you to make a prospect look better. Right. I was there to lose, but every time I got in with a prospect, I won. You know, because I had this fire inside of me, but I got overmatched early. I was fighting, I'd only had 10 fights, I was up fighting a world-class man. And those men had training camps. I was working all day. I'd do my daily duties, which was hard work in them days. It was manual labour. I'd finish at five o'clock, have me tea. No such thing as a dietitian in them days. <laughs> I'd have me tea, put my feet up, and then drive me some maybe 50, 100 miles to the venue in an old scrap car, fight and get me money and come home. I did it as an hobby. Mm. And it wasn't me uh, first and foremost love boxing. I did it to provide for the family mm. because I was, a, I was always a, a young father. I've been a father since I've been 18 years old. In our culture, you've got to provide for yourself. You can't go back to your mother or your father and say, lend me 20 pound or I'm a bit stuck today. Mm. That don't happen in our culture. They say, make your bed, you lay on it. Mm. And I thought, I've got to get money how I can. And if I had a slack week, I'd be ringing up the manager who's called Ever Ready Tommy. You know, <laughs> you ring his phone. <laughs> Ever Ready Tommy. Yeah. 
Tommy Miller from Halifax. I could ring his phone and say, Tommy, any work? Oh, he said, there's a prospect here, he's unbeaten or something like that. I said, yeah, how much is it? Oh, 300 quid, yeah, book me for Saturday night. Mm. You know, and the only, the only train I've ever done was myself. You know, I went to the gym, I think, a couple of nights a week, you know, and if I couldn't make it for work, I'd skip it and leave it, you know. I was never 100% fit, but what I did have was a, I was game. I had a good fighting art, good fighting spirit, and only beat me. The only people that beat me was world-class people. And the ones I lost because I wasn't training at all, and they was. And I was in over my head. But I didn't start when I was 22 with the gloves on. Mm. You know, I never had one amateur bout ever. I was never decorated. I was fighting people. I had ABA four times, ABA champions, Olympic bronze medalist. You know, Enrique Wonder would have fought in 91. He was the most decorated amateur the country's ever seen. You know, he's 14 and 0 as a professional, knocked everybody out. He just knocked a world champion out, JB Williamson, in one round. And I've got him on a week's notice, so I thought, yeah, you're paying. I've had a good hiding before for nothing. Mm. So I'm getting paid, so I'm in. And that's how I lived my life. But I was always game. And I thought, you know what? If somebody would have sponsored me and put money up and give me training camps and give me the chances other boxers had, I probably would have been better myself. Mm. You know, it must be something to breed what I bred. You know, honestly, you can't breed a world champion like Tyson out of something that isn't a fighter himself. Mm. Yeah, you can, but it's a rare thing, isn't it? But in Tyson's case, he's a full package. And you know, I would have been the full package because I had everything. The only thing I never had was people putting time and effort into me. And I was used and abused in the boxing world. Mm. But listen, that's life. But what I did do is picked up a wealth of knowledge of how you can get threatened in the boxing game. And it's not nice at a lower level. If you're not the golden boy, you're not the house fighter, you're in for a rough ride, mm. a white knuckle ride. You know, I had the white knuckle rides, I got the good hidings, all for nothing. I had 13 fights, never made three and a half thousand pounds out of all of them, because I was only boxing for hundreds of pounds at short notice. But what I did realise was that the people in boxing, most of the time, could not be trusted. And it was all about them, not you. Mm. And I never wanted any of my boys to box, because I thought there was never any future in boxing. All you're going to get is your brains rattled. Messing with athletes, what's doing it day and night, it's their full-time job. And me as a part-timer, going into that, well, I'm lucky I can still string a sentence together. You know what I'm saying? Mm. And uh, I thought, you know, I'm having miles go through this. You know, but Tyson, it was in him to do it. Mm. And wild horses could not keep him away from the <laughs> boxing gym. <laughs> even, all, even, the, even all the rubbish you to tell him about boxing, leave it. If, you're gonna, if you can't be a world champion, it's not worth bothering with. Don't give up your day job. If you're not special, you won't get looked after. They aid me say all that. Because I never have a big boxing up because it wasn't kind to me. But they still did Do it. you think that made them want it more rather than you being a pushy parent trying to force them in? Probably so, you know, because I didn't like the boxing side of it. You know, I packed all my stuff away in a box and I never wanted to see daylight ever again. Because in 95, when I walked away from it, I thought, you know what, I'm just going to get damaged here. I'd been out the ring five years, taking fights, two weeks' notice. And I remember boxing that night, and I thought, you know what, you must be mad. All I could hear was big thudding punches around my head, what I wasn't prepared for. And I'm thinking, you're not getting millions of pounds or thousands or even hundreds. You know, forget about this job. And when I got beat in that final fight, I thought, that's the end of the boxing career for me. I put all my stuff in a cardboard box, so that's not coming out ever again. But every time I come back from work, when Tyson was of age, he had me boxing shorts on, he had me boots on, <laughs> he had me head guard on. <laughs> and I used, to, I, used to, I used to greet me, you're thinking, oh, here we go again. Put them back, you see. They're unlucky, leave them. <laughs> but it still never deterred him. Mm. He went on to do what he'd done. Because mm. he said, it's destiny. Nobody can alter destiny. What's for you won't pass you by. And him to do this, he was put on this earth to do this special thing he's doing. And he's helping people outside the ring not just in it, mm. and I hope he continues to do so. Jake Paul's a limited kid. Let me just state this fact. Tommy has got to knock him cold out, looking at camera. This is real. So we'll come to Tyson in a moment. Um, is it true you did a hundred grand bare knuckle fight? Uh, listen, we do a lot of things in life for money, don't we? Because our backs are getting the wall, and if you can get money quick and sharp, you're going to do it, aren't mm. you? I, I never seen it as breaking the law, that. It was never a law breaker for me because it was two men agreeing to do something and we got on and do it and we do what we do. You know, and if you're lucky enough to get the win, get the win and move on to different things. And did you get the win? Well, 
I always get the win. I was never beaten. <laughs> I was never beaten outside. There's nobody out there can say he beat John Fury. No one. Yeah, in the ring, because I was messing with athletes. But people on my own calibre doing a day's work every day. They weren't beating me. Mm. Because I sort of like fight harder outside. Because that's what I can do. And I'm, a, a, you know, I'm a bit of a dangerous character when I'm in full flight, you know what I'm saying? Because mm. I'm a big, strong man. And you've only got a pair of gloves in the ring. Outside, you've got everything. Mm. And I made use of everything, me. Like what? Feet, elbows, head, teeth. You name it, I'd make use of it. Mm. But today's a jail job. Mm. And I did get jailed, didn't I? For what? Wow. It's of common knowledge. The way I've lived my life. Mm. Fighting. All in fighting. No mm. old bad. But it's a prison sentence at the end of it. Mm. And that's what I got. I got years in prison for being myself, what I've been bred to do. I didn't see it as a crime. Because mm -hmm. he would have done it to me. Yeah. You know, and it's do one to them before they do it to you in the fight game. And I'm an old fashioned man. I'm probably Victorian. Because I don't fit in this modern day world, but people don't see it my way anymore. But I know if you're going into battle, you're going to do it right, not half measures. Because mm. you want to get the win. And with me, when I'm fighting outside, the win will come, no matter how I get it. Mm. And I'll go to any lengths to get the win. Mm. And today, look at it as dangerous. So I've been capped off. <laughs> Wings <laughs> clipped. <Yeah. laughs> Prisoner of Mother England. It's my own fault. Why is it your own fault? Well, because I'm bred to do it. You know, and I can't let anybody be cheeky to me or take the rise out of me or disrespect me because all of a sudden I change into somebody else, probably a monster. Mm. And I don't like that character I change into, but I can't help it because it's the way we are. Somebody insults me or my family, I instantly think, I can't take that. All of a sudden, violence comes to me head. Violent thoughts, next thing. It's off. Mm. It's rolling. And the wind's coming my way, no matter what. But I'm glad I'm out of it. Have you learned to control that more? Nope. No? No. You never can control what's inside of you because you just don't put yourself in that situation. I keep away from crowds of people. I'm a recluse. I don't put myself in places where I think, hang on, could be trouble here. Mm. I don't go to funerals anymore. I don't do weddings, I don't do social nights out. Wherever there's drinking people, I see it as a potential banana skin for me to end up back in there. And I've run out of chances. I have no more chances. Where a man's gonna get bail, there's no bail for John Fury, none. There's no six months or two years into half of it. Mm. When, I get, when I go again, it's for life. I've been told that straight, I'm a one strike life for Sotir. But would I let anybody disrespect me? No. I don't give it cost me my life. They wow. can give me 125 a year. Somebody disrespects John. I'll bring out to breakfast. Or you bring it to me. Because if you don't do it to me, I'll do it to you. Mm -hmm. For sure. So what I do is keep myself away from it. But it's took being like myself and my mindset to create the champion I've created. So people want to get onto me and say, you know what, this man's a monster. He's this, he's that but it's took my DNA and how I am on hundreds of years, maybe thousands of years of crossing up and down to breed this super champion, mm. but will not give up. And that's what he, he possesses. And it's got to come from somewhere. It's come from me, because I won't give up. You know, give up if you knock spark out, you've got to give up. Because you can't carry on because you out your senses. But all the time I'm in my senses and I can feel my legs underneath me, my body parts are functioning. I'll keep doing what I'm going to do, mm -hmm. you know. So, boxing, the ring, is sport. You know, you do, they're not your enemies, are they? They're doing their job, they're feeding the families, they're doing what we're doing. Mm -hmm. But outside, it's a different thing. I look at it totally different. Yeah. You're fighting outside for what you, you are. I knew you believe in, you know, some people can't bragging rights over me, I was gonna be dead. You know, I don't care what happens in the ring because they're athletes. They're not from my world anyway. And I didn't prepare like them. So there's an avenue out that way for me. So I thought, you know what I'm expected to do. I've only got a pair of gloves on here. Because half them men, if I could do what I could do, I should have been an MMA fighter me. Mm. I'd have been more suited to that than professional boxing. Because you can use a lot more things. You know, but, uh, like I say, do I regret anything? No. Don't have time for regrets. Mm. Can't change it. It's done. Here we are today. Present. The future's bright. 
I try to be the best possible man I can be. And you know, you try and use your common sense mm. the best way you can, don't you? Mm. And that's what I intend to do from here on. But like I say, just don't disrespect me mm. <laughs> or my name and my family. Because I'll still get this coat off in 30 seconds flat and we're into it. <laughs> There's no talking with me. Yeah. No. We're fighting. You insult me, I'll let you there and then. I won't say, right, I'll see you tomorrow and do this, something. you'll like, you'll have it there and then. Do you respect Wilder? Not as a man, no. He's not a man, is he? He's like a spoiled kid. The only thing I respect in Deontay Wilder is his punching power. Nothing else. Not one thing. I don't like him. Don't admire him as a man. He's not one. Did you intentionally try and raise Tyson to be different and have a different control of emotions? Because you said you sort of didn't want him really in boxing, or is that same respect of the name in Tyson as well? It was and it wasn't, you know, because I thought to myself, you know what, the life I had as a child growing up, the pain, the suffering, the dying, I've experienced it. And did I want my kids to experience that? I've got to say, no, I didn't. Mm. I thought if these can walk through life without a reputation, without getting up every day being another John Fury, Oh, you're waking up today. You've got to put this persona out there. What's not really you anyway? I thought, I don't have that. I don't, I've, they can do without it. Mm. And times are changing. There's no room in this life for that. I thought, if I can steer them away from it, I will do. But none, mm. none of my boys have ever gone down that road because I've done a good job of that. Mm. I've steered them out of all that. None of them's had a fight outside. Tyson's never had a fight outside the ring in his life. You know, I think one, one of the other boys has. Maybe two's had one or two us kids, but nothing like I ever had. Mm. And I'm glad of that, because they can enjoy normal life. And normality is a lovely thing, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's underrated. Thing. Normality, when I sit down and I think <laughs> to myself, you know what, when everybody's nice to me, when, you, when they show you respect, they shake your hand. It's a good feeling, isn't it? Mm. And I was brought up with two things. Respect those who respect you. Treat people like you like to be treated yourself and the world would be a better place. Mm. But unfortunately, back then, it never used to happen. Mm. But today it does. Because mm. we're in a, a broader world. People see things differently. It's a better world. It's a better place. You know, it's not a dark place like it was 50 years ago. Mm. You know, where if you wasn't on top of your game, you just got walked on. There's room for everybody now, isn't there? Mm. I think the world's moved on. Mm. It's all better for it. You know, there's a lot... People's not bothered about saying how they feel, like the mental health thing. You know, I remember 30 years ago, if you mentioned talking about that, oh, you'll lose all your friends. I never had none anyway to lose, but, <laughs> you know, it'd been a lot worse for me then, you know. But uh, mm. you just say, you know what, I'm glad the world has become a place where you can open up and show your feelings, your true intent, and you can help others as well, can't you? Mm. And that's what I aim to do, because I'm not bothered about opening up about how I've lived my life. I'm pretty truthful in everything I say. Because I build my life on truth and not fiction. And if I've told you how it is, that is how it is. Mm. I don't cover nothing up or mm. sugarcoat it. I want people to understand fully and aware of what kind of man I am. Mm. People see in a different light, they probably wonder, he's a complicated man. He's a troubled man. Maybe true. Maybe it's all true. But there's one thing. I'm a truthful man in everything I say. Mm. There's no point in saying it otherwise, is there? No. Yeah, I'd love to talk about the mental health in a moment, if you don't mind, because yeah. I think there can be some yeah. helpful things for a lot of people. Absolutely. Yeah. So what I thought we'd do, if you don't mind, John, no. is do a little 12 rounds with John Fury. Mm. That was round one, so that's a long round. <laughs> <laughs> I told you to be long. Yeah. Don't worry, all the rounds. I'm not won't. freaking out here, guys, am I? No, this is great. I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm really enjoying it. So um, you just kick us out when you're ready. and Yeah, yeah. sure, son. You kick me out when you're ready. <laughs> right. What do you think of Anthony Joshua? He's lost the edge through the soft life. People slapping on your back, telling you how great you are, this, that and the other. And they sort of like put a false ego there. An ego bigger than what you've actually got. And I think he's fell victim to that. What's the legacy of the Fury family if you could control what it would be? Tyson doing what he's doing, getting out the job at the right time and staying the only unbeaten heavyweight champion of the world, reigning, defending, winning everything. The first heavyweight ever from a travelling background, gypsy culture. And, uh, you know, to change the world. 
and I hope people can accept people as they are and not how to think they are. Mm. And I think Tyson's helped do that. Yeah. And to be remembered as a gentleman as he is, you know, and uh, a great warrior of the sport of boxing. Mm. You want to help inside the ring and outside the ring and respect him for what he can do and what he can help others and not for what he is or what culture he is and what he isn't, you know. So, mm. yeah, think of it as this because it's never coming again, this legacy, what we've created. It'll be a long time before it happens again, you know. Tyson's a beautiful human being, you know, just give him a chance. Understand him more, get to know about his life more and accept him for what he is and how great he is. I'll never forget how great he is because when he's gone, he's gone. But is he great? Phenomenally great. And I just want to be remembered for that. Mm. The legacy is through Tyson, not myself because I didn't do nothing in my life to warrant anything. I just made my life more complicated than what it should have been. You know. All those things had to take place to bring us to where we are today. Mm. What I also want to do is to remember Tyson. Forget me, I'm not interested how they remember me. As long as they remember me as being a caring dad and always being there for them, that'll do me. Mm. You know, because you've got to do great things for people to remember you. And I didn't do nothing in my life that great, <laughs> did I? Only breed him. <laughs> That's great enough, Egg. That's great. And look, you must have had a big, big impact on the journey in his career. Ah, I didn't, I didn't you know, through my own stupidity, really, and uh, my own way of my own life, you know. How would you say you did and how would you say you didn't? Because I never wanted them really to bother with the boxing and I seen it as hard work and I thought, you know, wherever them gloves are, there's problems. Wherever the boxing seemed to have been in my life, it's been great in one way, but sad in another. It's been a cliche, a mix between the good and bad and boxing's caused it all. You know, so I really didn't want him to go down that road with it. But, you know, if you can do great things, why not? You know, but like I say, if it's your destiny, no matter how much you fight against it, it's still going to happen mm. one way or the other. Mm. So round two was your bare knuckle days. We've covered that in round one. Mm. So basically that was a six minute round, <laughs> round one and two. <laughs> so um, round three is the life of John Fury. Sure. So what does a day in the life of John Fury look like? Today... 17 hour interview. <laughs> no, no, I'll keep them short because it is short. My days now are, are not very entertaining. For most, but they're very boring. I get up in the morning, I do me, I run for about an hour, come back, have a coffee, watch a bit of mine on the TV, the professionals and whatnot. Mm. <laughs> if there's any jobs to do, I'll do them. And if not, I'll just think about what I've got to do through the day mm. and occupy myself with a few classic cars few classic caravans, you know, and uh, just look at life in general mm. and try and make the best of it. That's my day. Mm. Not very interested. Oh, that's great. What classic cars are you really into? What? I've got all kinds of old cars. I mean, they're not worth any money, but I'm collecting them all my life. Yeah. I've got plenty of cars from the early 1900s wow. to the 1970s. Mm. You know, anything over 1980, I don't sort of like have, you know. No. You know, because I remember the 1980 stuff because Adam was a young man. And I remember all my family being inside of them, being alive. You know, now they're all dead. You know, the cars and stuff like that from the 80s and the 60s on the 70s, I can reflect and I get enjoyment because where I can see them, I can see my family. Because mm. I'm the only living relative now apart from my brother and me and him's estranged. He might as well be dead and vice versa. You know, because we don't talk anymore. Why not? Boxing again. Uh, <laughs> that's mm. the downside of it, but we won't go into that. But that's the way things are. You know, and I can see those classic cars and them old things. Because I enjoy the old times better than the new times. You know, because I think it was a better place in some ways than what it is today. I don't mean in a way that, you know, things are open up. You can talk about things better. They're good today. All mm. that's very good. But back then, life was simpler. It wasn't as complicated as today. Yeah. And I'm a simple man, but I like simple things as well. Do you do work on the cars? Yeah, I can and fix them myself, yeah. yeah. And do you find that quite good for your mind? Yeah, it's therapeutic. Yeah. You know, yeah, it's not bad. And I bought and sold all my life. Right. You know, I like to have the odd deal. Me and the old pal here, John, he's known me most of my life. Yeah. You know, we've uh, grown old together. And, uh, um, you know, yeah, a bit of wheeling and dealing, a bit of Del Boy stuff <laughs> here, there and everywhere. It's all yeah. been good fun. And that's where I relate to. Yeah. Simplicity. Mm. You know, the cars are too complicated. The light comes on the dash. How are you going to fix that? Yeah. It just stops dead, doesn't it? <laughs> if my car breaks down, it's 30 year old and nine times out of 10, no problem. Yeah. And I can fix it. Because mm. I've got my toolbox in the boot. And if I stop on the side of the road, I can get myself going again. But with these new stuff, no, it's all 
computers, isn't it? Yeah. And boxes and plugins and all that. I don't want it. No. Too complicated. I try to keep away from complicated stuff for me. And that's my intention to steer mm. on that road. Keep away from complicated carry on. Mm. Keep it simple. Yeah, I like You'd that. You'd be happier. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So money, fame, celebrity. I take it you're not interested in that. If you are, tell us why. If you're not, tell us why. I'm not interested in it at all, tell you the truth. Don't float my boat. Why not? You know, nah, because it... When you've got a friend when you're poor and nobody, you've got a friend. Like today, who is your friend? I could have plenty of friends today because of Tyson, you know, and Tommy, you know, but where was they 15, 20 years ago? If they wasn't there then, I don't want them near now. Mm. You know, because I'm one of them kind of people, you know, new brushes don't sweep clean with me. <laughs> they don't. Yeah. You know, and I just say to myself, you know what? I'm sticking to the people I've known all my life. Mm. You know, and I'm, I wouldn't abandon my old friends, what friends I've got, and I haven't got many, for new ones today. Mm. Because it wasn't for me two sons and the fame and the stigma around the fury name. Well, they wouldn't want to know you, would they? Mm. You know, and I don't fit into their way of life anyway. You know, because I've got all my clothes at the charity shops. I drive a 30-year-old car, you know. I talk like I talk. Who wants to be around John Fury Senior? No one. All for the wrong reasons if they are. Mm. But I'm on to them wrong reasons. I can smell a fake from 30 feet away. <laughs> what makes a fake? A fake. A materialistic person was only interested in financial gain for himself and being around people what can enhance his job. Mm. You know, because if it couldn't do anything for him, he wouldn't be around you. They're fake people. Mm. They're only there for a reason, what they can get out of you or out of it. Mm. You know, I don't want those people around me. I'd rather be on my own. You've been really open about um, some mental health challenges yeah. you've had. So could you just tell us a bit about the challenges you've had and um, any ways that you think could be useful for, for people who are maybe going through their own mental health challenges? Yeah, well, listen, your mind is a complicated thing. You know, and uh, sometimes it's very hard to control, even for a man like myself. You know, sometimes I get bad thoughts come in my head and I just I think, hang on, I've got to get me suit of armour on here, I'm having a bit of a bad day. And some days a lot worse than others. And it's a terrible thing because it's a mechanical imbalance of the brain. And um, you've just you got this constant battle all the time with yourself because you can have the whole world and yet you've still got nothing. You know, you can be the happiest man in the world one day or the unhappiest sad man the next day and for no reason. And you can't put your finger on it. You're thinking, why do I feel like this today? But what I tend to do, is go for a run, tie myself out in the gym, try and find somebody to speak to who's like-minded, who's understanding, but don't look at you like you're a raving madman. And you know, I found by talking and exercise, it's mm. an aphrodisiac for that. Mm. It can keep it under control, keep it at bay, because I tend to overthink a lot of stuff. I can sit in the room by myself and within an hour, I feel like I'm going crazy. Mm. I'm thinking but everybody's my enemy. The world's against me. <clears throat> it's all been a waste of time. I even look at Tyson's achievements as like non-entities. I'm thinking, oh, they're not important. It's a pair of boxing gloves, a boxing match with a few accolades. And I shouldn't think like that. You know, I think my own sons are against me most of the time. I'm thinking about things, what's not happened. I'm thinking they are, but really they're not. And I'm thinking, well, stop and check. Stop and check here. This is not reality. It's a mental health thing. Stop it now. Let's move to an happy place. Mm. And I'll try and think about something else. You know, I'll go outside, try and make myself busy, find something to do, and try and get out of that mode, but it's hard work. Because mm. I don't take medication, you see. Mm. Because I feel like if I take medication, I'm sort of like losing the fight. Yeah. But a lot of people ain't as strong as me. You know, because I've been born like it's a DNA thing. My father was heavily medicated all his life. He had to have medication because he couldn't help himself. He couldn't, he couldn't function without it. But I'm determined to do it another way to meet it head on and deal with it. No matter how I feel in that day, what problems are in my life, I'm gonna deal with it. And I've had plenty of problems, massive problems. You know, and I'm thinking to myself, I've come through, I'm still here talking to you. And there's days where I've been down, days where I've been suicidal. Yeah, we all think like that. We all think about ending it completely. What's the point of living like this when you're unhappy? You're depressed every day. But I never defeat the object. Where does a way and a will there's a win and there's light at the end of every tunnel. And I'm just looking for the bright days and they are there. 
just look for them. Mm. If you're having a terrible day, tomorrow will be a brilliant day. That's mental health, mm. but it's how you deal with it. But I say to people, if you're not as strong as me and you've not got proper people around you, seek medical advice. There's some great people out there in that field that can help you. They help Tyson, because he's not as mentally strong as me, Tyson. Nowhere near. Great fella in the ring. Does everything. He's unhuman in the ring, but his mental health can get out of control and he can't deal with it by himself sometimes. You know, so... Do you think some people are scared to ask for help and do you actually think it's a strength to ask for help? It's a strength to ask for help. Mm. That's a good point because a lot of people are afraid to ask for help because of the stigma around it because nobody wants to be known as a nutter, do they? Mm. But it, you're not a nutter. You're not insane. You've just got a problem. Yeah. You know what? A lot of people got. There's probably half the population got it, but they're in denial they've got it. But I'm not in a man in denial. Me, I know what's wrong with me. I know what's wrong with me, but I just think, you know what? Let's not go there today. Yeah. I'm not having this today, me. I'm going to find something positive to think about. Mm. You know, and half the time, he'll tell you that he's known me a long time, John. You know, uh, I can talk to him and think, my God, you're doing my head in today. <laughs> you know, but it's getting off my chest sort of thing, you yeah. know what I'm saying? But it's a detriment to him because he's got the headache afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> he's still here. He still is a good old boy, John. I've known him all my life, you know, and at the end of the day, you know, talking helps a lot. And I mm. say to people suffering badly, seek advice and speak to people but like-minded people who understand you mm. or understanding. People are just going to fob you off and, you know, second-guess you, keep from those people. Yeah. They're not sincere people and you just get worse. Conversation with them, you will go under. Yeah. You know, but listen, take the pluses out of your life, the positive stuff. Summer, lovely long evening. We had a beautiful October, didn't we? Beautiful October. Yeah. The scenery we've got, the fresh air we've got, the beautiful world, can get on a plane and go anywhere. The people we can meet, different folk every day. The world's a great place. Let's look for the great stuff in it, not the bad stuff. Because the bad stuff will present itself, but the good stuff won't. Mm. But let's just find the good stuff. And it's there to be found, even in people. Because mm. a lot of people today, they are caring. They are caring. I admire all kinds of people, to be honest with you, because without those people, you know, where would we be? Mm. If a man's an island, he's no good for nothing, is he? Mm. You know, and like I say, I like my conversation with random people, especially the elderly people, because I can learn a lot from them. You know, if you're bottling stuff up with nobody to speak to day in and day out, and you're sopped behind that door, and nobody's coming to see you, and you've got nobody to talk to, it'd crack the sameness to people, wouldn't it? Mm. It'd crack anybody. But the places I've been in my life, I've just thought, okay, war's on here. Mm. Like when I went to prison, I was going to crack and I cracked them, wouldn't I? I thought, no crack in me. I'm not going in my coffin, in my grave, as a coward. Mm. You know, and I'm, I beat everything else in my life. I'm not going to let mental health beat me. Mm. I'm a better person than that. I look in the mirror and say, right, come on, Johnny. Mental health day today. Let's get on. Let's go to war with it. Mm. And you know, when I think like that, within an hour, I'm fine. Mm. You know, if I start feeling sorry for myself and overthinking stuff and think, oh, he's again me. Oh, they've not phoned up today. Oh, I wonder what he, what did he mean by that? I know I'm going downhill then. So I think, lying through it, stop what you're doing. Mm. Sing a little tune to myself <laughs> and say I'm happy when I'm not. Yeah. <laughs> and then I'm happy. Yeah. <laughs> I know it sounds mad, but it works. Yeah. For me anyway. Mm. But everybody's different. Yeah. Everybody's different. And I feel sorry for a lot of people out there what's not got my, my uh, mind strength. Mm. But like that's why there's professional people out there for people weaker than me, you know, because it's a terrible thing. It's a battle. And I try to point out to these people, I've been young. I've been a young mental health sufferer. You know, and the pl me pulling plus points out of my life and looking for the good stuff has got me to 56 year old talking here today to you. You know, tomorrow I'll have another bad day. I'm having a good day today because I'm doing this and I'm talking to you people. I'm enjoying talking to you, but I can soon have a bad day. And bad day is isolation day, mm. you know, and you shouldn't do that. And I'm isolated, not through my own choice. It's because people probably don't want to hear me carry on, you know, and um, they just think to yourself, or their self, I've got enough problems in my own life, I don't need yours as well. <laughs> I can understand them being like that, but it's not like a problem to do a work or normality, paying bills and things like that. It's an issue where if you're a trillionaire, you still be sad and you still have nothing. So it's unhealthy, isn't it? Mm. But I'm used to it, been like it all my life. If I go down the way, if I get two good days out of a week, I'm happy. 
I like Saturday. I like Wednesday. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds very random. <laughs> what do you do on a Saturday and a Wednesday that you like then? I just chill out <clears throat> on a Saturday. I know it's the weekend. I hate Sunday because it's always a dreary, dismal day. I don't know why. On Wednesday, I know it's midweek and we're halfway to the weekend. <laughs> <laughs> so I just, on them two days, Wednesday and Saturday, I do very little, never yeah. have done. Do you know Tyson's next fight? I've heard some talk about Dillian White. I've got a problem giving them paydays because they're not nice people. You know, they've got nothing good to say about Tyson, so why am I coming rich? I'd rather piss on the belt. And Eddie Ayn, I'm so jealous of Tyson. But Eddie Ayn now is showing me the man I thought he always was, a spoiled kid. When did you know, for real, was there a moment, and you're probably going to say I always knew Tyson would be a world champion, but, but was there a moment when you went, my son is going to be a world champion? From the day he was born. Really? Mm. Yeah, wow. from the day he was born. Because he fought to get into life so hard for life. I thought, you've got to be special to do what you've done. You know, because he was, he was uh, you know, he was so lucky to be in the world because doctors would give him up. He was, only, he was very premature, you know, and um, like I say, there's a lot of other kids never made it, but was in better positions than him. And when he was born, he had that funny look in his hand, his fist up like that, you know, and it's somewhat a little newly born baby, what still don't do. And I thought, you know what, boxing, fighting, I started to put it all together. Especially when he put his fist up like that, I seen him and I knew he was gonna live and I knew he was gonna be special at some point in his life. Never thought he was going to get to be the champion he is. I thought a British title would have done. You know what I'm saying? If he ever wanted to go down that road. But I, th I knew he was going to be special, but not, didn't know what in. You know, but I just said when he was born, I said, look, because boxing was the, the only love of my life in the sport. And uh, probably still is. And I just thought, you know what? Yeah, he's going to be nearly seven foot, 20 stone next heavyweight champion of the world. Because I was a mad Mike Tyson fan. He was wrecking everybody at the time, a young Tyson. I watched a lot of him. I was always about 3 a.m. in the morning for the fights, starting my generator, <laughs> making sure I had my gallon of petrol. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and it was just, it was an obsession with me then. And he come along right at the right time, I think, in the, in the time of my life where I was enjoying the Mike Tyson era. And I thought, OK, you fought hard to be here. I'm going to give you a special name. And I even named him Tyson randomly because I was watching so much of him. I used to get the boxing news every week. I only want to read about Tyson, nobody else. <laughs> you know, I thought, read that. No, I think it was, it was on my mind that much, you know, because I liked his way of going on. He was so like, similar to myself, you know, where he was always like uh, looked upon as, uh, you know, a product to make other people rich. And that's been my case in my life, like it has is. And I just named him Tyson. Mm. And I said that because I, I didn't really, I wasn't interested in any other sport. So that was his name, Tyson Fury. He always knew he was going to be special. But when he got to a little young boy, and I said earlier about the trunks and that, wearing the gloves that had been packed away, my boxing kit, for many years. And I kept seeing it all over the place. He was seeing him on with it and messing about with his other brother. Spar only had one set of gloves and he used to put one on. His brother used to have one on his hand and he used to have one on his <laughs> spar and he used to have a towel around the other one. <laughs> and they used to knock lumps off each other. The kids in the front room. And I knew then, I thought, here we go again. The fighting, the boxing has emerged, but didn't know how great it was going to be until he had his first fight. I knew then. How did you know? Well, he had his first fight, I think, in RAF Witten, somewhere in Lincolnshire, not far from you, mm. up the A1. Yeah. And he fought there, I think, when he was 16. And me and a fella from Leicester who were in a boxing club up there, he looked at me and I looked at him. He said, he is going to be special. He's going to be a world champion in his first ever fight. And I said, you know what? I can come and agree more with you, you know? What did you see in him at that age? Everything, really. I thought the mindset, his strength of mind stood out, you know, and his skill set, his movement for a big gangly boy. And he hadn't fully developed at 16 year old. And he was doing things that boxers who was 40 fights in wasn't doing, you know? And I, even then I thought to myself, you know what? We've got a long way to go but it's special. And he won everything because an amateur. Mm. He won everything. Whatever need to be winning, the only thing he didn't win was Olympic gold medal because he wasn't allowed to go. Yeah. Because it was all political back then and that's why we turned pro with Tyson. Mm. You know, and, um, but ever since he had his first fight and you know, we, a few bits of things leading up to that happened. I think he broke my original, he was 14 year old in a sparring session on the garden. 
and I knew then he was special because I'd been in with everybody, me, in 13 fights because he's tech the top boys because they paid a bit more, only hundreds again, but nothing compared to today. But they never hurt me like he hurt me, and he was only 14 year old. Mm -hmm. And you know what? No matter what you did to him, he'd still fire back, you know. Mm. Even though I wasn't trying to kill my own son, I was putting pressure on him because you had to. Yeah. Because he was that good back then. Because if he didn't put pressure on him, he'd put it on you and probably do you some damage, which he did. He broke my ribs. Yeah. And I just think, you know what, for a kid, nothing scares you. Nothing used to scare him at all. And boxing, he loved it. I remember he was fighting one time at Leicester and I had a pickup truck and he was on a bike and he must have grabbed the back board like kids do of the pickup. So I must have been doing 25 mile an hour when I seen him in the rear view mirror, so I braked <laughs> and he's loose the back of the vehicle and he's fell off. Well, he's took the skin all off his arm, blood everywhere, and he's fighting that night. I thought, look at this now. So right, you out that fight? No, Dad. No, I'm not out the fight. My arm's not broke, I can use it. He says, just a bit, bit of blood on my arm, and it's but I knew he was in pain. But anyway, he wanted to fight. He wanted to go and do his thing, so he wrapped it up. And the doctor said to me, he said, what's with the band? He said, it's his elbow, I said, he's getting a bit of pain in his elbow. It's only normal, it's a fight game. So, from training, okay, permit him to fight. And he won the fight anyway. He won, he won with one hand. <laughs> <laughs> and he was laughing coming to the ring. His arm was killing him and he's still laughing coming to the ring and he won with one hand. <laughs> so that's how I knew he was special. Yeah. You know, them just a few little bits of pointers like leading up to it. So yeah, mm. there'll never be another inmate, never. Mm. He can get it with shots or to knock bulls over and he gets up. You know, and I've mm. never seen that in a fighter ever. Because mm. Deontay Wilder for mine, when he's the most powerful puncher the world's ever seen. He clipped Tyson a few times, the last one was full on. His full body had shockwaves right through it and he gets up. Mm. Other people were out, they'd probably been in the hospital on the stretcher, wouldn't they? Not Tyson Fury. Mm. And that's what makes me proud mm. of his fighting art. You know, and that's what he is. Yeah. That's what makes him a great champion he is and he happens to be my son. So all the wrongs in my life, and there's been plenty of them, he's righted every one of them. Every one of them. Mm. And that's why I'm so proud of him. Mm. You know, I still will be to the until I draw my last breath. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Why, yeah. why do you think then that some of the boxing elite, David Hay, <laughs> Zella, all these people doubt him and criticise him? Why do you think that is and how does that make you feel? They're jealous, aren't they? Because they want... Tyson's everything a fighter and a boxer wants to be. And when they know they've not got it, instead of embracing him and saying, you know, wishing him well, they get jealous, don't they? Because it's not them. Because mm. they can never be the man he is. Jealousy comes out of them, especially now. You know, if a man's better than me, even the fights I lost in, in, in the ring, I used to go over, shake their hand and say, well done, mate, good on you. No malice in me. Mm. I was brought up that way. If you get beat fair and square with a better man, you can admire him, not be jealous of him. Because mm. jealousy is an evil taint, isn't it? Mm. You know, a lot of people has it. It's called a green-eyed monster. And I've never had that in my life. I've never been jealous of anybody. Mm. I like to see people get on in life. And you know, if a man's good, I admire him like young Mike Tyson. We'll go back to Tyson when in the 80s. I admired the man. I wasn't jealous of him. No. I wasn't, didn't want to be like him because I know I couldn't be like that. You know, you just admire people like that, wish them well. You know, but if you, you, you're jealous because you can't be that person because mm. you want to be and you go the other way and say rubbish about them and rubbish what they do and what they call put stains on the good work. It's not a nice thing to do, is it? And I could never be like that. And I just pity them. Mm. I'll pray for them, all of them. That's all you can do is hand them over to God. You know, and hope he can change their ways mm. and soften their heart towards him and make them respect what a man he is. Mm. You know, but it's jealousy, one word. Surely they must have changed their mind a bit now. Probably not. No? Well, going back to David A, every time Tyson boxes, you think it was a member of David A's family. He was boxing. You know, he's never ever said Tyson's going to win, has he? He keeps making excuses. Oh, this man never, he had a bad night. John Taywell never had a right hand. He had a right hand the other night, didn't he? Mm. A big right hand. But to hear David A talk, you know, people like him. You know, Tyson's just an ordinary fighter. Mm. He's not an ordinary fighter. That's why he never fought him, wasn't it? Yeah. Because he didn't want to get in because he was always scared for Tyson. He, and you know what? You know to be the best at your job and go down 
was an all-time great. You can't be frightened of a man, any man. And he was frightened of Tyson. Mm. You know, he, man, he done well in his career, not knocking his career. But did he have great nights? He wasn't great fighters, he won titles off, was he? Mormick was gone, late 30s, and the other one was a circus act. But he still got the accolades. He still got the business from it. He's still down as a world champion. But all I see David Ayers is one jealous individual. And I'll pray for him, along with his friends. Mm. <laughs> That's all he can say. Mm. But it's nice to be envied, isn't it? Mm. Better than being pitied. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Training with... Tyson, as a dad, it must have been a bit of a dance and a balance. How much you get involved, how much you don't get involved. Did you have a plan and can you talk to us about that? There was never any plans really with me. I'm, I've always been the father, always been there at the back of them. But uh, um, like I say, earlier on in the career, I was always there. But as of late, never there. To be fair, I'm always there as a backup plan. Yeah. You know, but they never ask my advice anymore because, like I say, about new brushes sweeping clean. <laughs> they always sweep cleaner than the one you've had all your life, don't mm. they? And in my son's cases, that's what happens. They believe in everybody more so than me. But that's just that the way it is. It, it, you know, it makes me feel sad at times because a lot of people out there respect who I am and what I am. And they know and know my stuff. But it's a pity my sons didn't think that way. Mm. You know, because they think everybody knows more than me. I think it's just a dad thing. You know, I don't know what other people might suffer it, but... Well, my 11-year-old thinks he knows more than the whole world and thinks I know absolutely nothing, well, so well, I don't join think... join the club. Yeah. That's what happens to me. They think my dad don't know much about boxing, don't know much about anything. But what they tend to forget is I've got them to where they are today. I've reared them, fed them, changed the bloody dirty backsides without swearing, you know. We've been through hell and high water for them, and they never seem to give you five minutes of the time anymore, you know. And other people sort of had the benefit out of it all. When it's got great for me to enjoy, I've sort of like been parked up a bit. That's how I feel. Probably mm. I haven't been, but it's probably mental health kicking in, me overthinking stuff and thinking, yeah, okay, give everybody else the credit. Mm. But don't give me none. You know, listen, they love me, I love them. But I think that's where it stays now. Mm. Us have got on, they've gone on to bigger and better things and I've stayed the same. John Fury's not changed, but probably they have. With the clientele around now, all these backslappers, all these people telling the great and this, that and the other. They love it, they get used to it. But with daddy, they don't get that. Because I tell them straight, hang on, you're off mark there, son. Mm -hmm. Behave yourself. You know, but people don't tell them that because they don't want to lose the jobs, do they? Yeah. They don't want to be unfriendly, they don't want to lose the friendship. I'm not bothered about none of that. Mm. If they don't want to speak to their father because they've been direct with them and straight, that's up to them, isn't it? But you know, all the people enter their lives, you know, they spend time with other people and they end up like them. Because if you're round a dog a lot you'll end up with a lot of dogs ways won't you <laughs> <laughs> that's how i seem to think and you know people's different they get set in their ways don't they but they get caught up in it all and it's only when they get older when it's all over and the dust has settled i'm guilty of it myself very guilty of it with older it's called being young you know now I reflect i think you know what my father's gone my mother's gone my brothers are gone i should have done this i should have done that but at the time we don't think like that mm. It's me now, it's me hard, and I haven't ever did. Because I think, hang on. I spent a lot of time with my mother and father, probably too much, you know, because it cost me two relationships. <laughs> because I, I was always with them, you know, and I think to myself, you know, it's like they said to me the other day, if we're like you, Dad, we won't have a relationship. I say, you know, if a woman loves you truly, you can be the man you are, you can be who you are. If you've got to be somebody else to keep in a relationship, you better have helped that relationship. And that's how I live my life, you know what I'm saying? But listen, I'm just totally different, you know. I'm like, an, I'm like hen's teeth, me. You know, people like me are very, very rare, you know, I think they're all gone. They died in the Victorian era, and I'm just a throwback to that time with different views. You know, but I can handle it. Like I handle most things, I'll deal with it. I'll deal with the pain of it. I'll deal with the, the disappointment. I'll deal with everything. Because mm. you look how I feel. I'm not on the big pitches anymore. I'm not at the fights anymore. The major issues, all them things, what I only dreamed of as a small boy, as a young man, I've been deprived of. You know, because mm. I can't be there. And do I want to be at an ordinary show, a London O2 arena, this, that, and the other? If Tyson's fighting there, probably not. Because if I can't enjoy the big Vegas nights, the big American nights, the buzz, the crowd, everything around it, what I'm never going to experience because of my own fault, not blaming anybody on myself, but the rest of it, I can't get myself up for. Mm. Probably will never go to another boxing match, ringside ever. Probably not a big night. Look at Tommy. 
biggest night of his life. He's only ever trained me. He's had to jump ship to get trained over there. But you know what? They probably made a mistake. They probably haven't. But it's still painful for me because I know I put a lot of hard work in to both of them boys and got very little out of it. Mm. So it would bother the average man, wouldn't it? But it, don't, it bothers me, but I can overcome it. Because mm. I'm used to being disappointed most of my life, you know what I'm saying? Because that's a story of my life. I've met other people a lot and took nothing and received nothing and got nothing out of it. And I'm still getting nothing out of it. Because people seem to think, oh, because Tyson's made millions of dollars, that goes for his father as well. Not this father. <laughs> I don't, you know, the, the only thing they give me is they might buy me a plate of dinner somewhere. Money. I don't ask them for any money. They don't give me none. I don't ask for none. You know, if they want to give me all the other, say no. Because it's a cultural thing with me. And money don't float my boat. A little amount of money, as long as it does me, I can get by on it. I don't need trillions of dollars. But what you do need is a bit of love and respect, don't you? And somebody say, you know what, my dad's there. He's a respectful kind of guy who got shown me a bit more. But they don't, do they? <laughs> Call being young, I'm afraid. Mm. But can I deal with it? Yes, I can. Mm. Looks like you're going to cry there. <laughs> <laughs> I've just taken the moment in. <laughs> yeah. I'm really enjoying this, by the way, so thank, thank you. you. I'm being honest about the matter. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think that's the best way to yeah, be. Yeah, of course. Um, I'm also thinking of my dad. My dad's 76. He's not been very well for a long time. I'm mm. going to be giving him a call in the car on the way back. Make so sure thank you, you for that. Yeah. Not one call. Spend no. time, not calls. Well, go around and see 12 him. Second, a 12 second phone call out of my dad is like an hour's phone call with someone else. Let me but... advise you. Go and see him and sit with him. It's not phone calls you want. Yeah. It's being sat with your people and discussing life. Mm. He, wants to, he, he wants to hear how your life's going on. Mm. And for me, I can't talk on a telephone. When anybody rings me, I want to get them off the phone. Because <laughs> I, I can't stick a telephone. No, if you want to come and see me, there's a chair there over a cup of tea. Let's spend a couple of hours. Yeah. If you don't want to do that, don't bother with a two minute small talk phone call. Barry said to me, Jake Paul will get 10 times the pay per views than Canelo. Yeah, at least he said something right there, Nice one, Barry. Keep them coming. <laughs> do you know where, uh, who's Tyson's next opponent is, Tyson's next fight? I don't, to be honest with you. I've heard some talk about Dillian White. <coughs> but Dillian White should honour his contract with Otto Wallen. He's had a deal with a man. He shook his hand. He signed a contract fighting. Tyson was forced to fight Deontay Wilder three times. He should be made forced to fight Wallen, honour his engagement, then fight Tyson, and let Tyson fight somebody else. You know, the only problem with these guys, me, I'll be honest with you, is giving people who dislike you and hate you a payday. That's how it's got me these days, because those people haven't got one good word to say about Tyson, yet they want to get rich off Tyson. Now, we all know in my mind's eye now, I know boxing inside out, that this injury, if there was an injury, alleged injury, I'm giving him the benefit of the doubt. Say he is injured. Give him a few, we can reschedule, you know. If he's not confident to beat Otto Wallen, which that's why he's not fighting him, how's he going to beat Tyson? But I've got a problem giving them paydays because they're not nice people. They've got nothing good to say about us. You know, they've got nothing good to say about Tyson, so why make them rich? I'd rather piss on the belt and chuck it in the bin to make people like that rich. Mm. That's the truth of the matter. Nice people, sporting men, proper men, you'd want them to have the fight and get on. But them kind of men, no. Mm. No. I don't respect them as men anymore because little things they do put you off them. You know, and if you can't admire a man's greatness instead of making excuses why he's great, I'm looking for the bad in people instead of the good. Are they worth making millionaires out of? I say not. Mm. And that's what greats me, to be honest. Mm. If I admire where they get nothing off me unless it was nice, that'd be nice to me and say good things and honour me as a champion I am and respect me for the champion I am or they get nothing out of me. Mm. I won't give it to them. I see, I go and I took the belt in the bin, go and box him down there for a quarter of the money. You barra. You know, but Tyson, can they afford him? I say not. So let's just see. Because mm. Tyson's prices are high these days, mm. and well, they should be. And can they put it together? No. And Eddie Ayn at the minute, no disrespect to him, but, you know, he's so jealous of Tyson. I watched some of his interviews now, and just see the jealousy he's now of him. Why do you think that is? Well, because he's no longer... The, he's no longer thought of as an number one guy anymore, is he? he thought he had everything in AJ. He's not got AJ no more, you know, because he's a, he's a tarnished product now. 
even though I think he can come back and win his titles back. But Eddie Hearn now is showing me the man I thought he always was. Which is? A spoiled kid. He's jealous of everybody else. People like you to do well in life, but not as well as them. Always remember that. Mm. They like you to do well, but not as well as them. But Tyson's gone to another level. He's out of orbit. He's out of the reach of all these men, and they don't like that. It irritates them, and they can't sleep at night over it because mm. it's that green-eyed monster again because mm. they wish they was in that position. But you know what? God will never give them the opportunities and the longevity in the job that they, they deserve through the way they are. Things will always go wrong for a man who's jealous of other people. At some point, they'll hit a nosedive. And that's why Tyson keeps winning. He's on and up and he's, up and, uh, he's on an eye every time. Because have you ever heard Tyson say disrespect anybody, any member of the boxers or his ability? No, you won't do. He gives everybody utmost credit. Utmost credit, he gives them all. If they have a good performance, he says it. You know, he never looks at the worst in the man's performance. He'll look at the good stuff in it and tell the good stuff and leave the bad stuff. But they only want to talk about the bad stuff in everything Tyson does. So I'm irritated and bothered about giving them a payday. And I've had my way, they won't get nothing. Even though it's not to do with me. Tyson thinks I'm an idiot like the rest of me sons, but uh, <laughs> I'm no fool, believe yeah. me. I've forgotten more than most of them know. Mm -hmm. Forgot about, I've forgotten more than they know most of them today, especially in the boxing game. But I could put those kind of people, so does having nightmares every night, because they're thinking, hang on, if I was in charge, my God, how would you get around this man? I want to get the most money out of them possible, because I know they don't like parting with it. And I want to make it as awkward as possible for them, because they're not nice folk, are they? Nice people get the last they had to, I'd help. Mm. I my eye out. You know these kind of people who live for money and possessions. And oh, look at me and this new word they come out with. Is it kudos? <laughs> kudos. Every time I hear it, I feel like, well, blowing a top. It's all about kudos. I don't want to give them any kudos. I want them left hook under the jaw if I get away with it. <laughs> that's what they deserve, not kudos. What did you think of Tommy's appearance on Love Island? He made me proud, you know. It shows that a fury can do anything. We're not just blood and gory guts and fighters. Fury versus Wilder. Oh, yeah. So, is Fury Wilder 3 one of the best fights of all time? Where do you rank it? Listen, it was probably the most exciting, thrilling heavyweight fight seen in recent years, you know, but um, it all boils down to one thing. Tyson can beat men without training because he had three weeks training for that and come through a multitude of problems. So he moved a mountain. Wilder boxed better than he's ever boxed in his entire career, so he's got plenty of plus points out of it. You know, uh, could he have boxed better, Tyson? Of course he could. Could he have gone about it different? Yes, he could. But How could he have gone about it different? Well, he, he just could have boxed more. He could have moved more. He could have, a lot, did, done a lot of, he could have used his attributes. Tyson didn't use any attribute in that fight. Only one, one attribute he used. You know what that was? Heart and bottle mm. and desire to win. You know, because he was taking everything, wasn't he? Mm. He made a dogfight of it, which... He could have done in parts, not all of it. Mm. Could have made it an easy, a lot easier 11 rounds than it was. Mm. You know, he walks around to that big shock wave shot, walks around to it, rookie error, moves straight onto it. You know, because, you know, it wasn't a boxing match. And I think there's a lot of needle in the fight. A lot had been said in previous matches. And I think it all got on top of Tyson. Tyson knew he weren't properly fit. He wasn't properly prepared. He just put his, he put his armour on and went to war. And turned out that why wasn't it. he fully fit and prepared? Well, he never timed, did he? You know, he, he, he was training for the first lot, got COVID-19. He was out the ring then for a bit. Then when he got back into a little bit of training, his daughter took bad when she was born. That took three weeks out of him. And he never left Alder Hay Hospital till the 5th or 6th of September. And then he fought a month later, four weeks, you know. Mm. Over there to where he went, Vegas, he had jet lag for 10 days. So take 10 days off it, how could you be fit? Mm. When you put it all together and look at the problems he had, there was no way he could win. I knew, I, and I knew this, it was bothering me, but I thought, you know what? You're going to do it anyway, so I'm not going to put a damper on it. I'm going to say you can do it. Because mm. I've always told Tyson, you can beat these men without training. You're that good. You are that good, son. You can beat these men without training properly for them. Mm. Because they haven't got what you possess. That's heart and desire and the will to win. And for me, it was a worrying thing. Because 
even though we're trying to big him up because he's going to do it anyway. I tried to say to him, leave it. Don't bother, you can't do it, it's impossible. He's been training for 12 months for you. You know, he's, he's made a lot of adjustments, which he did. And I just thought, this, is in, this time it's mission impossible. I thought, am I being a proper dad by saying do this and do that? I told him straight, I said, Tyson, when he come out of Liverpool, put this back till next year. I didn't want it put back till November or December, next year. He said, Dad, if I got one leg, he said, and one arm, he said, and I had the flu when I was in bad health, I'd be fighting Deontay Wilder. <laughs> well, so on that, let's get to it and do what you can do best, and that's fight. I said, you can fight 12 rounds, no matter how mentally stressed out you are, even if you're not physically that good. And all I did was spar. Spar, that's it. Bit of gym work, that was it for that. Mm. But he's probably the most ill-prepared <laughs> defence of his title you could ever have. Mm -hmm. But it just shows what he's made of. Yeah. You can't keep a good man down. And you can't keep Tyson down. The only way Tyson's kept down, you nail him to the floor. And Brendan Ingle said that about him when he was a kid. He's the only one man beating him, he can nail him on that floor. And I don't see anybody doing it in the, in the near future. And he's proved it. You know, but all those fights and them bombs you keep taking, he's putting miles on the clock. Mm. And that's what I don't like, because he's, he's a great boxer. He doesn't need to get it. But unfortunately, the crunk style is... You knock them out, or they knock you out. That's been proven. Mm. And since he's been with a crunk, he gets hit more. You know, and everybody's in the game now, because yeah. he's easy to hit. Mm. Before, he was hard to hit, you couldn't land on him proper, so the weight was out the shot. But the way he's fighting now is very good for the crowd and the paying public. But the longevity of the boxing world, in his career, short-lived. You know, because it's become a time when you want to detect them shots, and a lesser shot will put you over and keep you over because your punch resistance goes mm. where you take that much stick. And that's the only thing I'm bothered about mm. because he's too slick of a boxer, too intelligent. He doesn't need to get it with nothing. But I think he's got it in his head. He's got to please the crowd, which he's done that. You know, but I told him, if you want longevity in this job, you need to box more. So if you give up your boxing, what took you to them titles and made you great, all these men are in with a chance because you're easy tit now. Mm. And he is because it's not a boxing display, is it? That last fight, even on top of the mental problems he had, he was injured anyway. His elbows was gone, both of them. He's just had a major operation. As soon as he come back after that fight, he's had surgery on his elbow to remove problems related to them to boxing over the years. I think he had, he's had, he had a bone grown out of his, uh, it's called like spurs, aren't it, where the bone grows out of another bone. He's had to have all that shaved off. His arm's in a mess. So he was one-armed. And he's, he, he was boxing Dante Wilder with a dead arm because he had that many injections, chromosome injections in his arm. So he couldn't feel his arm or else every time he missed the jab, he said, lock out and put him in limp mode. He said, the pain was horrific. He says, I couldn't use the jab proper. He said, all I could do is use the short punches up close mm. and make sure I was on target. But that enabled you to get it more. But everything was right on the night. He got the win. It was thrilling. But everything was also wrong, very wrong. You know, he was injured. You know, he was mentally not right. He was physically not right. We could see the shape in him. The fat was bouncing all over on his body, you know. And to be honest with you, it must be shameful on the strength and condition to turn his man out like that, really. But it's not his fault because no, he had no time to do anything with him. Mm. He could only do what he had. He could only could do what he could do with the time span he had, which was very little. You know, you can see. He can win. And then they give him point, Tyson. Mm. But no one's superhuman. I know he's so, showing superhuman powers, but it'll all come crashing down if he don't box more. But everyone now is in with a chance. And everybody's thinking, yeah, he's slowing down. You know, he's easy to hit, he's more square on. He is, because that's how he's being trained to knock people out. You know, but a man what can box like him, why not use it? Mm. And keep yourself in the game a bit longer. Fight when you've got to fight, box when you've got to box. If I had my money, if I was training him, he'd be a box fighter, but I'd do it in spasms. I'd fight in 20 second intervals and then box again. Mm. I'd give him some stick for 15 or 20 seconds, then get back on my bike and box red off. You know, and keep the head moving, keep the feints going, keep angles left and right all over the ring, what he's good at. But now, what's he good at? Going forward and taking punches and out gaming people. You know, because that's all it is at the minute. But it's working, mm. you know, but listen. How many more fights do you think he's got? He could have one, he could have another 10. 
I don't know what I said. He can't live without the sport of boxing. Mm. It's all, that's his life. You know, take him, give him three weeks out of the gym and he's lost. He's like an headless chicken. He needs that injection of sport boxing mm. in his life. So he could go on for a long time. I said retired the other day, so you don't need to do any more. You've won everything. You know, you've got millions of dollars in the bank. You don't need the money. Enjoy your spoils of war. But he doesn't enjoy the money. He doesn't enjoy what he's done. He only enjoys the sport of fighting mm. because the rest of it's irrelevant to him. I know it is. You know, he likes being relevant. He likes all that, but it all comes to an end with him. And he starts to want mm. the slog and the thrill of the chase again. Because when Tyson's defending titles, he's not like a defending champion. He's like he's trying to win it. Yeah. And that's how you've got to be. And I still see that fire burning bright. Mm. And I'll know when it's not. Mm. But I think it is. Mm. It still is. Do you, you know, a lot more for him to do yet. Yeah. Do you respect Wilder? Not as a man, no. Why not? Because he's horrible. He's not a man, is he? He's like a spoiled kid. I do, the only thing I respect in Deontay Wilder is his punching power. Nothing else. Not one thing. I don't like him. Don't admire him as a man. He's not one. But can he punch? Of course he can. Has he got guts and can ship punishment? Yes, he can. I respect his desire to stay in the game as long as he did. Because he was beat from the fifth round on or fourth round. I know he got the knockdown, but he was still getting beat till he got the knockdown. But after the fourth and the fifth, it showed art and game is to get to the eleventh round with the stick he took. So I admire that part of him and his punching power, nothing else. Mm. There's nothing else to admire, mm. is there? Do you think Wilder respects Tyson? He's got to. Even though he don't want to, he does. He's got to because of what's happened to him. He's beaten him three times, hasn't he? We couldn't make an excuse the third time. No, though, we could could he? I thought I was waiting for him, wouldn't you? <laughs> but I think it was a bit too much, the excuses this time. That's to put me off him altogether. Because, you know what, I thought, when I first seen him box, I thought, you know what, you could have a great champion, you. You have to take your time, you get matched right and learn to box a bit better. But, you know, when I seen the carry on out of him last time, I seen how he handled himself in defeat. And that's not a man in my book. It's like a spoiled kid who thought that his ego could never get dented and he thought there wasn't a man on the planet that could even equal him. But you know, I've seen through all that. Mm. No, but that's Deontay Wilder. I hope I never have to see or hear him again. That's how I feel about Deontay Wilder. Mm. But can he punch? Yeah. Do I respect that? Yes. Biggest puncher this century. Wow. Yeah. Mm. He's as big a puncher as they've ever been. You know, and... Um, even like Tyson. Said, yeah. Yeah, he could punch every bit as hard as Mike Tyson him. Believe me, but Tyson delivered his shots differently. But him was a one punch man. Well, just look, Tyson weighed 20 stone on the night. The shot waved straight right through his body. Have you ever seen that before? No. I haven't. You know, he's a big puncher, all right. You know, he's got art. Of course he has. But you know, if he just needs to look in the mirror and tweak his man mannerisms, he get respected more. People like me, but who am I? Who am I to disrespect anybody? But I like honour and I like men. And you know what? It shows what kind of a man you are when you get defeated. That's when the truth comes out in your true colours. Mm. When you do take a defeat, it's how you handle it. And I know how my son has handled it. God forbid touch wood, it never happens. But I know how he's been brought up. Good on you, my friend. You're the better man tonight. Good luck. Carry on with your career. All mm. the very best to you. Not like I don't respect you. I don't, I don't respect you as a man or a boxer or a sportsman. I told Tyson, do not go near that man. Don't show him any kind of respect at all, even after the fight. But Tyson... Who he is and what he is, he went over to do the manly thing mm. and congratulate him. They both went to war, both took a lot of stick. He thought, you're worthy of handshake, you know, I don't like you. But it just discredited his whole performance, his behaviour after the fight. Mm. And he's done it twice now, hasn't he? Yeah. So what can you say about him? Mm. Nothing good, I'm afraid. What would happen if Tyson fought Tyson? My lot of win. When, how? Boxes ever. What do you think of Anthony Joshua? An ambassador for the sport of boxing. He's done a lot for his country. A likeable fella. Looks right. You know, he's a promoter's dream. He does everything right. What do you want him to do? Big, strong man. Good array of boxing. Can he come back and win his titles? I think he can. You know, he just needs to get a bit more devil in his work and believe in himself more. If he gets those two points, in order, he can come back and regain his melts. Yeah, where do you think he's sort of lost that edge? Because 
It seems a bit baffling, I think. He's lost the edge through the soft life. People slapping on your back, telling you how great you are, this, that and the other. And they sort of like put a false ego there. An ego bigger than what you've actually got. And I think he's fell victim to that. You know, and that's why he wants to go back to being the man he was. Being this, how can I say, more aggressive type. His natural character. Because he's got used to playing a game, hasn't he? He's got used to playing this character who's not, not really him. He's off the streets of wherever he's from, Watford. He's been brought up like we all have on the rough side of things, you know, and um, I think they ironed it out of his work, you know, just so as he could fit the bill as being a poster boy. And now he's lost a couple of times. Now he's thinking, you know what, I need to revert back to my natural, who I am, being natural, my well-being, and being the man I want to be. Mm. I think he spent too much time thinking about other people and what they were thinking of him and his big business deals, his sponsorship. I think he was trying to please them more so than winning the fights. And uh, he made the biggest mistake, didn't he? He overlooked the sport of boxing. Mm. Because if you think about everything else, apart from what you've got to do in the ring, it'll catch up with you. And that's all that's happened to Anthony Joshua. He took his eye off the ball and got soft. You know, the people around him, telling him he can do this, telling him to do that. Because if you get people around you, and you can't get nothing wrong around them, and everything's right, even though you know you're wrong yourself, where are you going with it? Where are you going with that? You can't move on from it because you think, oh yeah, Oh, it must be right, because they think it's right. Little do they know they're just telling you that to keep their job and keep face with you and be around you and carry your bags a bit longer. Mm. But that's cost him to be a loser. Yeah. Caused him to be a loser today. But I think he can get it right. Get the devil, get some rough, tough... Well, without swearing, garbage going in his life. <laughs> you know, get back to the street kid, the aggressive kid, the no-nonsense kid. Let's have a row, not be, not be frightened to get his hands up and walk forward and bring it to him, mm. you know. If he gets that back in and get the devil back in his work and believe in himself, why not? Mm. But do I like him? Yeah. yeah. He's ten times more of a man than Deontay Wilder. What a man in defeat, though. You know, you've not heard him complain once. He's took it on the chin, like a man should, and he's looking to rebuild. I can only admire that, mm. and I always will. I admire him because he takes a loss like a win, positively. You know, and that's proved he can come again. Mm. And with that mindset, he will come again. Yeah. Do I believe that wholeheartedly. Do you think we'll ever see Tyson Fury, Anthony Joshua? Why not? <laughs> Why not? It's the only fight I was ever interested in. I was never interested in Deontay Wilder. I made a clear point to that. Why? In previous videos. Because I thought Britain deserved that fight between, at the time, the two belt holders. Mm. But now it's gone. Even if he fought tomorrow, it would never be the same because it's not the same stigma anymore. Yeah. You know, even though he can come back and do this, that and the other. It should have happened this year, that, mm. between them two. But politics are boxing again, read its ugly head. And here we are today, which I knew all this was going to go wrong. I knew it, even though I thought myself, AJ might pull it off because he's a bigger, stronger, more, you know, more of a gigantic physique on him. I thought just out hustle him. And I did think he had devil in his work from his previous fights. So that when he got up off the canvas with Klitschko, and he come back to win then. So I thought he'll do it with Usyk. But when I watched him fight Usyk, he wasn't the man I was looking at. He wasn't the age I seen previous different fighter altogether. And why do you think that was? I just think he thought he only needed to do so much. I think he thought he was at home and he's going to get a points decision. Sit behind his jab. I thought he thought he's the house fighter. He's the big name. The judges are going to be fair to him. You know what I'm saying? But listen, it was a one-sided beatdown and it was his own fault. Mm. Plus his corner was saying to him, you know, get behind the jab, just jab, not try and win. I think they was just trying to keep him in the fight. But it's what he's done outside the ring leading up to that. It's a culmination of things what leads up to a defeat, especially with a man like him. And I think it's the way he's lived his life outside the ring before the fights and all this kind of thing. There's, there's a lot to it. Mm. You know, there's a lot of things can lead up to a bad performance. And he just had a bad performance, but it's cost him dear. Yeah. But can he resurrect it? Yes, he can. What do you think will happen in the Usyk rematch? If he fights like that, nothing. He's got to change his game up. He's got to get physical with him. He's got to use his 18 stone, his strength. He's got to bully him to death. He's got to take him into a dogfight like Tyson did with Wilder. If he's not prepared to do that, same result. Because mm. Usyk, he's a fine champion, fine boxer. Probably the most technically gifted boxer he is. You know, and he's a very dangerous guy. And what makes him dangerous is that will to win again. Because he took some stick off AJ. 
he took some big hard heavy shots mm. and he wants a win does Jusek you know so yeah it's a tall order because I think he's a great champion yeah and I think it'll be a good fight between him and Tyson but will he beat Tyson though no. definitely not Tyson's too big and he can box equally as good as he can when he trains to do that so let's just see mm. let's just leave Anthony Joshua to his own job he's got yeah. a mountain to climb but I'm yeah. sure he can if anybody can he can mm. you know good luck to the kid but a nice kid mm. I do like him mm. There's no harm in liking people, is there? No. No harm no in being harm. nice either, is no. there? No. No. Definitely not. Mm. I always thought he was a good boxer. You don't give gold medals away, special Olympic ones. No. You know, you know, he's done great things. And I mean, he's given me some good thrilling nights, says AJ. Mm. Edge of the seat stuff for me cup of tea, a cheese sandwich. <laughs> some decent viewing. You know, yeah. but I, I was disappointed when we never got the AJ facts is all I wanted. You know, because that's what the British public deserved and they never got it. Been deprived again. Mm. I don't know why, mm. you know, but there you are, that's life. Do you think it's going to be hard for Tommy's career if he loses? Absolutely, it's over. Oh, really? Yeah, but he knows. It's early over? Oh, yeah. You know, Jake Paul, Logan Paul, these YouTubers, are they good for boxing? Yeah, they're earning money, the credit to them. But let me just state this fact. The Furies don't take false fights. This is a real fight, people. It's a real fight. Tommy is going to take him out. But is he a real boxer, though? Who? Paul. Paul, he's in there, isn't he? He's had four fights, he's been mixing with the boxing gloves all his life. Any man that's training and sparring, like he's sparring and training, are fighting men. That's what he wants to do. He's proved he's got bottle, he can do it. But I just want to tell people out there, John Fury and any Fury, we don't get involved in fight trust, not real. This is as real as night into day, day into night. Let's just get that fact clear. This is a real fight. Tyson has got to, Tommy has got to knock him cold out. Cold out, and that's what he's going to do, knock him out. Mm. People say about the contract and bizarre contract. Yes, it was bizarre. I said yes to everything because we wanted the fight because I know Tommy can beat him at a canter. You know, whatever they'd have said, I'd have put it in the contract because I just want this fight and I want Tommy to get what he deserves out of it and get and chin Jake Paul. That's what we're here to do. We don't get involved in rubbish, the Furies. What's the we rubbish when you say rubbish? We don't get paid to take fights, what's not real. Mm. We wouldn't get involved in them, not for, not for a trillion dollars, because mm. we're too big for that. But yeah. I had lunch with Barry Hearn a few weeks ago, yeah. and Barry said to me that Barry could probably knock out um, Jake Paul, and Eddie definitely could knock out Jake Paul. Well, That's what he said. Well, I'm telling you they can't. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Jake Paul. He's a 14 stone, six foot two guy who's training to fight. You know, he's got art, he's got, and he wants a win as well. Mm. So they talk rubbish. I, I, you know what? I don't know why they've even come out with that. You know. Well, to be fair, Eddie it was said to me in a lunch. He didn't say it like in well, public. In my money, Eddie and Barry Ayn couldn't knock a W out, let alone Jake Paul. So they're talking rubbish. Stupidness. Mm. You know, it's a real fight. These yeah. two men. They've never been so real about anything in their lives, Jake, Paul and Tommy. Mm. They both want to win because they know it's all on the line. And I you said, said you said there was some weird stuff in the contract. Oh, What's all that? kinds of stuff in the contract. Like There's what? all kinds of it. Like you've got to change your name for a year, you've got to this, you've got to do that. Hey. You know what? <laughs> What's that? What, the loser has to change oh, their name? I've got to change his name to Tommy Fumbles, you know, <laughs> the year, uh, all rubbish and that. I could go into it more and more, but I don't want to bore people with the politics. You know what I'm saying? Because he is none, you know. And like anything else, they wouldn't sign up to the VADA testing either. That bothered me a little bit, because that's I wanted that in the contract. You know, but it wouldn't do that. But I'm not even bothered about that. Because what they're gonna do, they're gonna do anyway. So yeah. We just want the fight because we know we can win it. Mm. You know, and if people think that Tommy's getting paid to lose, they're joking. Because mm. a fury would rather be put to death with a bullet between his two eyes than go down that road. It's never happened in three hundred years of the fury. Dynasty, it ain't happening now. This is real. I'm telling you, it's real. I look in that camera. This is real. Is this a risky fight? For Tommy, no. No? Definitely not. I'm thinking about Tommy winning light heavyweight titles, proper titles, but it's a big occasion. There's a lot on the line. Tommy's a young kid, and I've only said the only people who can beat Tommy is Tommy. The occasion, there's a lot of pressure on the kid, immense pressure, we know that. But if he's any good, he'll overcome it. You know, because look at the pressure Tyson's under mm. every time he steps in the ring. So if he can handle it, he can. And if he can't handle it, he's not as good as we thought he was. Mm. You know, and you need, you've got to tick every box in the boxing world. 
You've got to be able to handle these kind of big nights because you're going to get plenty of them if you're any good. Mm. And if you can't handle them, get another job in it. Do you think it's going to be hard for Tommy's career if he loses? Absolutely, it's over. Mm. Oh, really? Yeah, but he knows. It's early over. Oh, yeah. Yeah, if you, listen, if you can't beat the Jake Pauls of the world, the kid's a limited kid. You know, we know this. Probably he wouldn't win a decent level amateur contest. You know, he's never fought a real boxer. They're all, YouTube, they're all MMA guys. It's a different sport. They're crossing over to his world. But once he gets in with a boxer, what knows how to box and been bred to do it, you'll find a lot of that. I'm expecting Tommy to knock his back out within four rounds. And I expect he'll quit as well. Jake Paul will quit. I think he'll quit under wow. the immense pressure. I really do, yeah. Well, you can quit in the fight or quit boxing altogether? No, he'll quit in the fight. Right. I think he'll quit in the fight. Because when, when Tommy hurts him, Tommy's a good finisher. And can he take that pounding round after round after round? I say not. He's not been used to it. He's not mm. been bred to do it. And you can spar and do as much as you want in the gym with the 18 ounce gloves and headgear on. With the small gloves on, you get a man who knows that the fire shots randomly at you. You know, and Tommy, Tommy if, he, if he's on his game, Tommy, and he's firing all four cylinders, easy night to work, easy money. Mm. And the winner goes on to bigger and better things. We'll get the brother out of the game as well. And then we'll start looking at conventional titles. So you mean you think he'll fight Logan as well? Well, he's going to, the brother's going to want to redeem his other brother, isn't he? The brother's, when, when he knocks Jake Paul out, the brother's going to want to take his part, isn't he? But I don't think so, because the I didn't. Tommy's going to give Jake Paul. The other brother won't be interested either. You know, Is that a fight you'd want for Tommy after Jake I Paul? I would, yeah, because there's yeah. plenty of money there. Yeah. There's plenty of money, more money so than what you could... Listen, Tommy's getting paid more money for this than some world champions. Mm. You know, he's paying, getting paid in the millions. You know, So if we can get millions for not getting there, we're going to go do it because it's good business, it's brains. Yeah. Mm. And we can always go back to the other job, can't we? Mm. We can always go back to the hard slog where you'll have an harder fight for an area title than any of them two brothers can give you for a lot less money. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's a business boxing. Mm. And it's my job to make the most of it. Yeah. And as a father, I will do for him. Mm. But can Tommy play with him and knock him out? Of course he can. Absolutely. And that's what I'm expecting. No more, no less. Mm. You know, I, I don't even want him to struggle with Jake Paul. I don't even want him to have a close fight with him because he, he deserves, if it goes if it goes a distance and a close fight, give it the other kid. Give it Paul because he deserves to win. He's in America. Tyson's got the Tommy. Sorry, he's got the ability. He's got the knowledge. He's got the power. He's got everything in his favour to stop Jake Paul and many more like him. And if he's going anywhere in the boxing world and he's thinking about world titles as a proper boxer, and you can't get these men out of the way. Mm. It's no good. It's over. Yeah. He knows that. I'm a realist. But it's a real fight. Tommy's got to knock him out in my book mm. and go on from there. I'm sure he will. But let me tell you, people, this is real. John Fury don't do anything else but real. Believe me, you know me now, don't you? I don't get involved in that rubbish. And why do you think that Jake Paul and Logan Paul are good for the sport of boxing? Because quite a lot of people don't. Why not, though? Because they're intelligent kids. The business lads are out making money. They've got millions of YouTube followers. It's a new wave of boxing. It's bringing different audiences, you know, different eyes, different ears. I think it's brilliant. Like the MMA, the crossovers and all this, you know, everybody's benefiting from this. You know, because there's people going to look at the Jake Paul and my son fight more if they didn't really much want to watch a conventional boxing match because they've both got millions of Instagram followers, you know. And like I say, the diehard boxing fanatics, it probably ain't going to float their boat. I can understand that, I get that. But there's other people out that don't understand boxing at all. Who are going to see these fights. Who see know. these fights yeah. and they get enthralled and they love it. Yeah. Because the fans are both people. So it brings a lot more to the table and opens a lot up in the world of entertainment. Mm. And that's what these guys are about, entertainment. Yeah. And they're making millions of dollars out of doing it. You know, I'm back to Eddie and Barry and they're only jealous because they're not promoting it. <laughs> of course they are. Yeah. Yeah, P Green with Envy, them two boys. Well, Like every other. Barry said to me that Jake Paul will get 10 times the pay-per-views than Canelo, best pound for pound boxer in the world. Absolutely. So to be fair, Barry was quite open to the Paul brothers and how the sport is changing as well. Yeah, well, at least he said somewhat right then, hasn't he? He got somewhat right. Mm. Nice one, Barry. <laughs> Keep them coming. <laughs> is there any corruption in boxing? And if so, who do you think causes most of it? 
I'll answer some of it, but not all of it, because I'll get shot. Yes, there's corruption, but it's up to you whether you want to get involved in it. And Furies don't do corruption. What did you think of Tom Mee's appearance on Love Island? He did what he had to do, didn't he? He made me proud, you know? It shows that a Fury can do anything. We're not just blood and gory guts and fighters. You know, he, he appealed to the Joe public out, and I thought he, he won. You know, and uh, like I say, you know, I didn't know the man was in Love Island. I didn't think he was capable of doing it. He showed a different class, a different side to him, an honest side. He wore his heart and his sleeve. He was real all the way through it. He was himself. And, you know, he made me very proud. Couldn't say any more. I enjoyed every minute of it. I watched all the takes of it, probably twice. And it's not my programme. I'd never, probably, never even heard of Love Island before it come on. <laughs> but being as he was in it, it was my son. I was going to support him. Mm. I was going to watch it. And I enjoyed it. Mm. And again, like me, and people like me, it brought different eyes to different programmes, didn't mm. it? Because a lot of people like me wouldn't look at Love Island. Yeah. But a lot of people did just because Tommy was in it. Mm. You know, so again, it brought fresh eyes and fresh ears, didn't it? Mm. But I enjoyed it. It done me proud. Yeah, it done his family not, proud. You're not so much in the Victorian era as you say you are. Well. I think you surprise some people with well, the Well, I would. But yeah. it, and, you know, I'm ashamed to say it really, but there's a lot of programs <laughs> I don't watch. You know what I'm saying? I don't watch Coronation Street. I don't watch Emmerdale Farm. I don't watch nothing like that. Mm. Reality TV programs just don't, I don't... You know, my TV programs are talking pictures. If it's, if it's not made before 1960, I don't want to look at it. <laughs> That's my only TV, talking pictures, Channel 81, on Freeview. <laughs> <laughs> the rest of it, keep it. <laughs> sure, it's very good, though. Um, is there any corruption in boxing? And if so, who, who do you think causes most of it? I'll answer some of it, but not all of it, because I'll get shot. Yes, there's corruption, but it's up to you whether you want to get involved in it. And Furies don't do corruption, but there is a lot of people involved in it, as much as I'm going to say on that one. Okay, so without mentioning names, what is the corruption? What goes on that's not right? Well, <laughs> judging. You know, there's been some terrible decisions, haven't they, up and down, haven't they? And it's all about money and political status and this, that and the other. I could go on about this subject all day, so let's just end it there. There's a lot of corruption in it. You know who you are is dealing with it, but we don't do that. We're real. Everything mm. about a few is real. We will not participate, not then, never have and never will. End of. The Klitschko fight, was there any... Con Controversy behind that? For my money, yeah. I thought Klitschko eased off him. Because Klitschko had him in the fifth round and he didn't done it for the next two or three rounds, Klitschko, did he? Let him back into the fight, but that's just my opinion. You know, but he come back to get him out of the emphatic style. Good luck to AJ. You know, but did I did I suspect something in that fight? Yes, I did. Because he had him gone. But Klitschko, after he ate him, never threw a punch for two or three rounds. And I find that a man of his calibre, 10 year heavyweight champion in the world, undisputed and uh, his knowledge of boxing let him off the hook like that when he was gone. Iffy. And why do you think that was the case? Because AJ was upcoming thing and maybe he had a share in AJ, I don't know. All right. He probably had a share in AJ somewhere along the line. I wanted AJ to move forward, thinking, OK, my career's over now. You know, I've just had a big payday. Let this man go on. Is there any beef with Eddie Hearn and why? They're just jealous people. End of. Move on. Can John... <laughs> We've got some eyebrows raised over there. Should look. Can John Fury do a, an answer in 15 seconds? I don't That's know. the challenge. So we've got a few quick fire rounds, and your challenge is to answer these questions in 15 seconds. How many? Uh, we've got two, four, six, eight. If you could fight any boxer in history, who would it be and why? Mike Tyson. Because I've always admired him. I love to share a ring with him. Why did you name your son Tyson? Because I like Mike Tyson. Is there anyone in boxing history? that could beat Tyson? Not at the moment, no. No one if that's error, ever lived. You can't compare old errors to new errors. Like an old car, you can't compare it with a new one. The performance is different. New one. What would happen if Tyson fought Tyson? My lot would win. When, how? Box his head off. Move on. <laughs> is it true you own the oldest caravan in the world? Yes. How old is it? 115 years old. Why don't you get a new one? Because I, I like the one I got. Is there any beef with Eddie Hearn and why? No beef, they're just jealous people. End of. Move on. Why do you think the public love the Fury so much? Because we're different. How? And we tell the truth. And we're not bullshitters. Move on. Uh, will Tommy ever fight KSI, another YouTuber? Probably. If the money's right, it's all good business, yes. Mm. Fight them all. John, do you have a 15 second hack for mental strength? Yes, believe in yourself. And look to seek like-minded people. And it'll work for you physically and mentally. 
John, this has been a total pleasure. I've really enjoyed it. I have myself, sir. Uh, thank you very much. I'll shake your hand. You're very good at your job. Thank you. And I've really enjoyed your company. Oh, and thank I hope you. I've enlightened a lot of people. Oh, we love this. I've been truthful. I've been to the point. I can't do any more. No. And thank you very much to all of you and your team. Thank you. And I hope it's successful for you. Yeah, we've really enjoyed this. I always know when these love it. I can just tell when they love it. Thank you. So, <laughs> Listen, I'm probably the biggest dummy in the world, but you know what? There's no more truthful a man than me. I tried to be. There's no point in going on, is there? Because mm. people out there, they're sick of hearing rubbish, aren't they? Mm. You know, if people like me can tell the truth and enlighten people, it's a breath of fresh air, I think. Mm. Especially in today's world. And on yeah. that note. Thank God you very you. much, John. Good luck. Thank you, and you. Fascinating interview there with John. Let me know in the comments the parts you enjoyed, discussions on some of the beef and the predictions. I would love to hear what you think. Put it in the comments now. So I've been Rob Moore, and make sure you like this video, turn on the notification bell, and subscribe to the channel. And remember this, if you don't risk anything, you risk everything.